How you doing, everybody? I want to wish you all a happy new year. I hope 2014 is going to be a good year for all of us. And I want to thank all my subscribers and welcome anybody new that's watching the videos. I'm hoping to pick up some new subscribers in this new year. And I'd like to see more comments, more, um, more viewer participation on the videos. I'd like to hear what you think. And I also hope to attract some more female subscribers. And uh, besides the YouTube channel, just like to see more interest from women in precious metals as an investment. I know we have some great women here in the YouTube uh, stacking and investing community. I subscribe to some of them. I know some subscribe to me. And that's great, but I think um, it should be more. I can see some of the demographics on the videos, and I'm at about 13 14% female viewership. And you figure that should probably be closer to 50%. And um, even the men, I think, you know, a very small percentage of the, the population is interested in um, investing, you know, as a whole, let alone, you know, precious metals and stuff, um, bullion and, and whatnot. So I, I think that that needs to increase all around. And uh, I think that there's been too much focus on being a consumer um, across the population as a whole and also especially with women I hear it you know joked a lot about you know shopping and different things like that and uh, I think being a consumer is not a good thing it's not something that you want to strive to be um, it's not something you know that should be held in high esteem there should only be a small portion of your life where you're a consumer um, Maybe, you know, as a child, you're a consumer and maybe in your old age, you'd be a consumer. But the rest of the time, you should be a producer, um, a saver, a creator. You should be adding to not taking from and a consumer is just someone that takes up and uses more than they produce. It's someone who's not adding to the worth or the production so you being a consumer is not something to strive for and you see a lot of talk about consumer confidence and consumer numbers and it's just um you know we're now a consumer driven economy and a lot of the stuff that we buy and consume is just garbage i've done it myself i've gone to the 99 cent store you know the dollar stores and bought a bunch of junk um, a lot of it's stuff that i don't need and even the things that I do need, you get this stuff that's really low quality and disposable, and it's not a good investment. Um, you know, a lot of things in the past people bought were useful items and would last a long time. They were well built. People planned their purchases and bought things that served a purpose and got a lot of use out of those things. I've bought some stuff that, you know, after few weeks or month or whatever you know it's garbage and you're throwing it away and having to replace it again um, a lot of this stuff is obsolete by design it has you know a built-in uh, failure point they expect you to have to replace it and that's part of their their business plan and it's just you know it's bad for everyone and uh, the idea of just lining up to buy junk that you don't need or that's going to break is is terrible and uh, they've even promoted it as a, a worthwhile, you know, something to strive for. I'm on Instagram and there's some people on there with bullion and coins and investment and stuff. And that's great. But a lot of what I see is just people showing off their junk. You know, they're showing off they're out at a fancy restaurant, you know, wasting money on stuff that they don't need. Um, some of them, I'm sure, are doing really well and can probably afford to waste some money. But for other people you know that aren't doing so well they're they're just showing off and and being frivolous with what they do have and uh it's been glamorized and it's pointless i mean don't get me wrong it's great to go out and enjoy yourself sometimes and you know that's um that's good i mean you know spending on building memories and having good times that's irreplaceable but we shouldn't all just be out living above our means and um you know, trying to impress other people or impress ourselves with materialistic things that are, are worthless. Um, so I just kind of wanted to comment on that a little bit and talk about ways that 
we can attract more women into investments and um what your ideas are i know jewelry gets a lot of hype and there's um you know women are known for buying jewelry or wanting jewelry and i think that could be a real positive thing um i know in india a big part of the gold investment goes into jewelry and i find that really interesting and i know mike maloney is doing some stuff on his site i think it's silvergold.com i think it's the same one that does the Pegasus rounds, but he's released some bullion jewelry. And I think that's really interesting. And it's, it's of course over spot, but it's not ridiculously priced. So he's doing supposedly investment grade jewelry. That's like chains and stuff. And it's a somewhat reasonable premium over spot. So maybe that could be an angle that, you know, you could push, um, you know, the investment properties of jewelry to your friends and you know what I mean I'd like to hear um from some of the women if you uh talk to any of your friends about you know investments in in bullion or you know precious metals and things like that and what they have to say what their thoughts are um just like to hear more more opinions on it and way that we could uh expand our our uh, interest base because it, one thing with silver especially is the big uh, investment or the the industrial demand I should say so investors are directly competing with industrial demand and the more people that we have interested in silver as an investment uh, the more that we're likely to see our investments grow so the wider base of interest that we can create um, not only are you going to be helping people to buy something that is of value and a store of wealth, but you're also increasing your customer base when you decide to sell or when you have to sell. I've heard some people on here talking about, um, you know, helping the younger generation get into metals because they're um, increasing the, the value of their retirement plan. So in other words, when they have to liquidate, they're helping to create the customer base that's going to take over their position. And I think that that's a good thing. And it's good to just help people be informed and, you know, maybe give some people some ideas of things they could buy. So I think jewelry is a really interesting one. Here's just a small, it's a little 14 carat ring. It's a nice one. I think they called that hammered. It's like a hammered style. But that I picked up used. And I, I don't know, you know, some people are okay with used jewelry. Some people might not like it. That's why I thought the Mike Maloney with the uh, bullion jewelry was interesting. And if anybody knows other places that we can find jewelry for close to melt value or, you know, at a reasonable premium, leave some information. Um, also, I'm curious how reputable some of the hallmarks are. I know hallmarks used to be taken pretty seriously. And now I don't think it is so much since they've partnered up with China and we're getting all this junk there. I'm not sure if anybody really uh, enforces, you know, the hallmark and purity rules and regulations. So I'm curious how much confidence you can have in things that are hallmarked being of the actual stated purity. And um, yeah, just interesting. And globally, I mean, jewelry is a huge part of the, the metals investment picture. So like I said, in India, I guess they're wearing a big portion of their gold investments. So a lot of potential there. And uh, just how we could broaden the uh, the base of people that are interested in precious metals and um, especially adding more women to the uh, equation, I think would be good as well as men. And... Um, I went in, I stopped at a jewelry store and just kind of asked about some silver chains and I was shocked when they showed me a really small, thin, you know, silver chain for $500 and it was just silver, no uh, stones or anything. And I mean, I almost laughed my way out of the store and I understand there's a little premium, you know, some kind of an artistic premium or a jewelry premium or something, but to charge that much over spot, I mean, this thing was you know, just a few grams of silver, I don't know, less than an ounce. And that kind of blew me away. So I thought it was interesting to see Mike Maloney doing his stuff at, at close to uh, reasonable prices. And I'm sure there's other places that are doing jewelry at a reasonable premium. And I'd like to hear more on that. 
and just uh, some more on how we can attract more people to the precious metals community and uh, investment community and YouTube community. So leave your thoughts, leave your comments, like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year.